I was only 14 years old when I began to have a, like an interest in a different medicine than the traditional one. This because of some experience I had in my own family health, uh, but also when I was 14 years old, I began working after school in a health store in Copenhagen. So this was my first touch. It was all this uh, alternative medicine, vitamins and different supplements I had to deal with every day in this health store. And when I had worked there for about four years, the owner, he decided to sell the store and I decided to buy it. And it was also in this health store, I met food reflexology for the first time in my life. Because the first school in Denmark of food reflexology opened just beside my store. So I became very excited to learn about food reflexology, mm -hmm. to hear about it. So I started studying food reflexology. This was in 1978. So it is about today, 42 years since. And uh, it took one year. I was studying by night and working in my store during the day. And after one year more, uh, some other schools uh, showed up in Denmark. It became very popular, very fast, the food reflexology in Denmark. And there also became some, um, we can say, a more structured ed education. So I did the full education again because the first education were actually very poor. Of course, it was very new and it didn't have like a good structure yet. So a new school started uh, to offer um, courses in Denmark, education in food reflexology in the Chinese food reflexology called TCM reflexology. And it was two years education so I also did by night as I still had my health store. So after these two years, I studied more. I decided also to be a acupuncturist. It took three years by night. And after that, I also did what we call Tots for Health. In this year, I also became very, very interested in laser therapy. Actually, I have worked much more with laser therapy for acupuncture than with needles. And also color therapy, which I studied in England and in Italy. So I was very, very active in my profession and I studied really a lot. I also became an aromatherapist. I also studied Bach's flower medicine. And you know, sure, if you are in this alternative or complementary therapy, as I used to call it, we can keep on studying the rest of our life. And I did uh, at least 200 courses uh, when we count everything today. So it's a long, long journey with a lot of education. But the basic is what I told you now. But also, uh, at one moment, it became too much for me. I got very, very fast, uh, many clients, I had many clients from the very beginning, actually already when the first year in the wild time I was studying, I started off having clients in a little room beside my store. So I had my store, I had treatment and I had, had education. And um, after some years it became too much. I have to decide do I want to be a health store owner or do I want to be a therapist? And I choose to be a therapist. So in a moment I sold my store and I moved very close to the airport in Copenhagen in this area where I also were born. And I opened a clinic there and a school because I also began teaching. Uh, you can maybe imagine in this time there was not a lot of teacher. So the one who got most experience fastest, we became teachers. So I had a house where I had 11 employees and I also had teaching and uh, treatment in the same space. Um, I also, whatever, I was very, very busy and very active. I also managed to have some children, my oldest daughter, when I was 19. And when I was 23, I got my son. 
and uh, I got my son with a health problem. Basically, to just do it short, uh, it was very much about epileptic attack. So life became also more difficult for me. And the, in this year, where I have to manage my clinic as a sick child, I also, because I spent many hours in the hospital, I studied homeopathic medicine. Uh, uh, so this uh, is like my background and already um, in this year I got a huge interest in children. I had like a, a, a wish that I really wanted to help children with special need problems. Um, in this moment I was very focused on children with school problems and um, the school where I have been in school, my, myself as a child, uh, they allowed me to work with uh, children in special need groups and I did some personally, what can we say, research for, but just for myself to combine touch for health, food reflexology and actually I also did craniosacral therapy and um, I had some results. It was quite fascinating because I really saw a transformation uh, in this group of children I were working with, with. It was about 20 children. But it was also like when I stopped working with them, the result I have obtained, they were like not lasting. So I was really wondering what is going on? How can I obtain result and why do they not last? It was a big preoccupation I had during this time and in a moment I went to a additional course of acupuncture with a Chinese Dr. Dr. Wong who was invited to Denmark in the school of acupuncture where I have studied um, and uh, first I thought no now I have done so many courses you know you cannot mm -hmm. just study 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 uh, so I decided well I will not go but in last moment, I decided, I changed my decision and I went to this course. And I thought so many times after, wow, that was good that I changed my mind and I went to this course. With this Chinese doctor, I had a very profound talk about my project with the children. And I told him about how disappointed I were because I were working with these children, I got results and when I stopped working with them, whatever I maybe give them 12 or 15, 16 treatments, then it was like they, the, the result disappeared again. And he said to me, I will tell you one thing, if you do not work with some specific acupuncture points on the face, you will never get a good result, which is lasting. So he gave me 16 points and he told me, try to combine these 16 points with your food reflexology and then you will see change. So I decided, okay, I will do this project again. And um, now I could see faster results, more clear results and also lasting results. So yes, it was really some very exciting years for me where I tried out already in this moment to do something better that we had in this moment. In food reflexology in Denmark in these years, it was from 79 until 88, I'm talking about, uh, the most common client we had, it was client with muscle problems, with structural problems, maybe with allergy, stress problems, stress-related problems at this time. So, um, we didn't have a lot of other experiences at, at all with brain-related problems or with ulcera or with cancer and all, all these kind of things we have today. It was really muscle problems, which was number one. And um, I got like a contract with the, the Scandinavian Airlines company. They had very close to my clinic a big... Uh, a big building with 600 women working with writing machines at this time and um, these women they had a lot of problems they were working 
day and night it was flights uh, company so of course it was bo both uh, 24 hours actually so I got like a contract as a kind of company work where me and my staff we should maintain uh, this uh, employees with uh, food reflexology for muscle problems basically later I also got a contract with um, a group uh, of m more men related work as the one who took care of the uh, luggage and all this heavy work in the airport and we also had a maintainment contract for this group so very early I also started uh, like what we can call company work I also got a contract with the local police and uh, the different work that the police were coming to my, my clinic to be treated uh, but for the Scandinavian Airlines I had to send therapists to the airport to work so it was really really busy years for me and at the same time as I so told you I got a son with a health problem basically uh, the largest problem were that his illness caused a huge amount every week of epileptic attack and many many hours in the hospital so when it comes to the point with my own son when he was three years old i nearly gave up i saw him in so bad condition i were nearly sure i would lose him and it was of course a very emotional strong moment for me and of course I was very young and as I told you there were absolutely no experience at this moment in acupuncture for questions about brain dysfunction or reflexology at all but in homeopathic medicine yes and I had one of the best teachers in homeopathic medicine in in whole Denmark and he told me several times when I talked to him about my son's situation that I should try a specific homeopathic medicine he was recommended me and it, and in a moment my son he was in so bad condition that I felt I have no cho choice I have to try to save his life uh, I have to try it so yes I started up giving my son homeopathic medicine and actually in no time his whole situation changed so much that um, yes I also started then I got like a power to see that the homeopathic medicine could really help him that I also started to treat him myself so I treated him with food reflexology I used also craniosacral therapy in this moment for him and I also used uh, this knowledge I had from the Chinese doctor about brain issues so very very fast my son he recovered in six seven months uh, he was actually like a totally normal child and without epileptic attack so this was the background I took with me to Argentina in 1988 and of course I was very curious what do they know about reflexology in Argentina I was also wondering can I learn something new in Argentina I had absolutely no idea it was a moment where no email and the uh, telephone was also not uh, a thing that everybody had so yes everything was like a adventure and I arrived to a city called Bahia Blanca which is in the middle of Argentina in the coastside on the top of a very very uh, big hill and um, there was only road of earth up to my house and as I already told you we have no telephone and also I was not speaking Spanish so it was like condition I had to begin with and um, we lived there and uh, I was thinking what can I do how can I eventually start up working here in this place with reflexology um, I asked some of my family 
can you help me to find out if somebody know about reflexality here but nobody have never heard this word they didn't even know what it was about well i had to feed my children so the first i did it was to begin baking bread and i did of very natural substances this uh, bread and uh, I found out that it was not a, a, a bad idea. If you cannot speak with people, do something they can eat. This is a good way to get the first communication. And uh, everybody there around me in this hill, they had an idea. This woman, she is not really a baker, no? She know other things. And uh, every week, in the beginning, I had no idea why, an elderly man, he came to ask me for some money. Um, and I just paid him. It was not a lot of money. I just paid him without knowing what it was for. And uh, every time he came to my door, he showed me his leg. He had a big, big ulcer. It was from the knee to the ankle. And it was really, really bad looking. And he showed me and he expressed all with body language that it was very, very painful. And I also understood that he have had this ulcer for 30 years. My God, 30 years with such an ulcer. And he had it packed in like in plastic. So I said to him, you must take this plastic away. I tried to communicate him that. But he said, no, no, the medical doctor was the one who told him to keep it enclosed in plastic. Okay, so I offered him, I can help you if you like. And he said, no, I'm very poor. I cannot take it. Uh, this from you. I, I have no money. I said, I would like to help you also if you are not able to pay. But he didn't like in the beginning to receive that. So every week he came, he claimed about his leg he told me about his leg and one day i saw his face there was no doubt he really had very much pain so he accepted finally my offer so i gave him food reflexology and also i had my laser therapy with me so i also applied laser on his ulcer directly and after about 10, 12 treatments, his ulcer were for, totally cured. And then from this day, I didn't have time for making bread anymore because this same man, he walked around from door to door, to door and told people about his cured ulcer, very, very happy. This was the way I got my first client. And I think this is a very beautiful story, also confirming that the best way we can get clients in our life, it is by recommendation from our clients. I'm very, very sure that is the only way. So I began ha having clients with other kinds of, of health problems. Suddenly I had a man with psoriasis all over his body, which was a pathology i i never tried before in this moment in my life i also had people coming with ulcer i have clients with um with asthma i have much more different uh, health situation different health situation than i never had in denmark but well i just jumped into it i did my very best worked a lot with all my knowledge about food reflexology and laser therapy. And one day, after about five months, I have been in Argentina with a huge queue in front of my door every day with clients without any appointment time because they just came and they just waited in queue until one after one. I attended all of them from early morning till to very often very late night and um, the word was spreading so it was like this queue never ended one day i had a little break uh, i was looking out of my window we had an old bus coming up to the top of the hill and uh, a very young girl she were 
leaving the bus. She came with the bus and I was just shocked to see her. Mm -hmm. She had very hard to walk. She was suffering of plasticity very, very much. She had her arms, her finger, her legs, her feet, her body, all uh, with a very huge specificity. She could hardly walk. And after about 15 minutes, something like that, suddenly it knocked my door and I opened the door and it was her. And she said to me, I would like to have treatment from you. I have heard about the Danish woman here and I have been recommended to visit you. And this is the first time in, in my life now I have been working like it was in 88. It, I have been working 10 years as a food reflexologist with a huge amount of clients, but I never had one who had suffered a brain damage. What happened to this girl? She had a brain damage when she was 19 and now she was about 22. It was three years since she had her brain damage. She had a surgery in her brain. So I actually my reaction was, no, I will cannot attend you. I have no experiences in this kind of brain issues and I have um, I think it's not a good idea to work with you without experience. And she became so very sad. And um, of course, um, I felt sad for her. So I like took a decision very quick. I said to her, okay, I believe strongly that I'm not wrong, that you need food reflexology as everybody else without or with brain damage. Everybody we need um, therapy to maintain our body in good condition, our organs, our glands, our blood circulation. So if you will be happy to receive a treatment as this, without I can promise you anything about what will happen related to your brain damage, I will treat you. So we agreed about that and I began to work with her with food reflexology. It was very, very difficult because she really actually were very spastic. Uh, I think she could only move around because her will. It was difficult to get her on the treatment table. It was difficult to work with her feet because they were so much spasticity in her toes and feet and legs. But I managed and I gave her two treatments a week. I could imagine myself that um, once a week would not be enough for such a case with this kind of problems. They must have more intensive treatments. So she came up to the top of my hill uh, two times a week, a lot of challenge for her to get to my place. And um, then it came to a moment where I had been in Argentina for about six months and uh, some of my family, they came to visit my house and they told me they were on their way to the more south of Argentina to the mountains in between Chile and Argentina, a place with the name Copau. And they told me that in this place there were a very special nature where we find 11 volcans very close to each other and where many people from around the world uh, Argentine people, but also from Japan, from the United States, they come there to take care of their health. Many people once a year, and it is about taking bath in these volcans. And I found it so interesting for me, it sounds amazing. So I decided, okay, I will just close my little treatment room and I will 
uh, travel with my family to this place. So I did. And it was just amazing to discover such a beautiful place and to see how many people, they were coming there very concentrated in four months of the year to bath in the natural volcan. It, it is a area very specific and very unique in the world and each of the volcans they have different colors the water is different colors uh, and the water has different temperature and there is like a medical house in this area where uh, people before they can uh, go and bat in the natural um, volcans they have to go through like a kind of analyzing and a test by a medical doctor and then the medical doctor will tell each person how to use the volcans how many minutes combination of one volcan with another one depends of the uh, health problem the individual person have very extremely interesting area in the world and of course i were amazed about to meet this to learn about it and to see it but I also noticed that in the valley, a little bit longer down, when I were there on the top of this mountain, uh, there were aboriginal. I could see tents. And wow, I, I was also amazed. I'm from Denmark, no? I, I was amazed to see aboriginal in real life. And first, really, I thought it was a movie, you know, but I realized, no, this is not a movie. It is real aboriginal. And I asked my family and they said, oh, we really don't know anything about this, uh, but don't go there. They could be dangerous. Keep uh, distance, they told me. Well, but I were excited about this, seeing this down in the valley, 11, 12 tents, uh, real aboriginal tents. So I decided next morning, very early, to ride my horse down there to take a look a little bit closer mm -hmm. how it was. And of course I were like some kind nervous. Uh, I didn't know really what I were doing, to say it honestly. And um, when I were down there, I like moved behind the tents. Suddenly I saw inside a tent, there were like an opening. I saw a woman sitting on the ground and in her, on her legs she had a head of another woman where she was working like, first I thought a kind of massage, but I was like totally paralyzed just looking at her and more I was looking I could see this is not a body massage because actually I didn't say it but I also learned in Denmark a, a kind of Chinese uh, body massage, Meridian massage. So I also know about how is massage. So it was like this elderly woman sitting in this tent. She was moving her hand different. And it comes, came up in my mind, this is like a food reflexality, but on the face. And actually, in this moment, I decided this is facial reflexology. And as the time just went, I was standing and looking and looking. Suddenly, this elderly woman, she also looked at me. And first, she looked like shocked, as I maybe have looked shocked at her when I saw her in the moment. But then she began smiling. And she just smiled and smiled and she looked at me and I smiled to her. And then I moved a little bit closer. Then she gave me a sign that I could come even closer. So I ended actually up sitting by her side this first day and observed very closely what she was doing. So I was there for a couple of hours and I saw her working with different faces. This was like a thing I would never have thought in my life could happen. 
I was so excited about it. So I went back by horse higher up where we were located, close to the Balkans, and I began asking people around, do you know something about this Aboriginal? Do you know what they are doing? And people, they said, no, actually, we, we don't have any close relationship with them. Um, the only thing, they come here in the morning and they sell cheese and they sell wool. But there's really no communication. They don't speak Spanish. They have their own language. We don't know anything about their culture. They told me they are nomads, that they move. And I also learned and found out that in this area, Kopawe, it's only possible to go there four months a year because the rest of the year is totally covered with snow. And in the, at this time, this Aboriginal will move. Some people in the area upstairs in the hotel, they told me, there's an old medical doctor over there in this cabana, they said, in this little wood house. Maybe he knows something because he had been working many, many years here in Kopau. So I went to knock his door and I asked him the same question. Do you know anything about this Aboriginal? Do you know what is they are doing? A kind of stimulation on the face. No, actually, he said, I never saw that. Uh, I don't have very close relationship with them. And he actually just told me the same as they told me in the hotel. They are coming to sell cheese and wool every morning. And he also told me that he always wondered why they only want to have dollar and not Argentine money when they are selling cheese and wool. When you look at the way they live, they live really intense and they don't have absolutely anything from our world. They are cooking in open fire, they are catching the fish in the river or, and they are also uh, eating only, for instance, cheese. They have sheep and they eat the, the cheese they do and only like natural things, they live totally with the nature. So for what dollar, this old medical doctor mm -hmm. asked me, I don't know either. <laughs> so he couldn't give me a lot of information. He just told me that this is a group of Aboriginal called Pewinche. The most common Aboriginal in Argentina is Mampuche. This is a very much smaller group called Pewinche. Um, this name is coming from a tree growing in this area. So, this was like my first meeting with the Aboriginal, especially with the women. The next day, I was back by horse down in the valley and I went strictly to the tent where I had been with the elderly woman the day before and uh, as soon as she saw me she smiled and of course now I have pen and paper with me and the um, pen and paper of course uh, I want to draw what she was doing and this same day she also did on my face so I could feel how was the feeling how deep she were working and everything so I spent like five days in this area, every day I went to the Aboriginal to learn and I also realized that this elderly woman, she was not the only one doing the therapy. There were another elderly woman in another tent also doing. And the thing I saw, it was that it, that was only on women's face. I didn't saw at all any men. I saw women and I saw small children and also young children. And it was specific women and the young children that these elderly women were treating. I also saw that they used like a kind of 
very white and like slimy stuff to treat the face with. And I learned later that this was raw rosehip oil from the same area. This area and the whole South Argentina, it is full of um, wild rosehip. And uh, when they become like uh, ready for use in Argentina, they are very, very big and you can just press them with your hands and the first raw oil is like running out from the rose hip. So this was what they were using for the therapy. I learned they also use this for the body. When uh, I went home from the Copaue, I had to go back by bus. So I went back with bus, another very special experience uh, to travel in old bus uh, down from the mountains uh, very very I felt it very very dangerous but I had in my mind constantly this therapy I have learned from Aboriginal in this amazing area which is the mountain of the Andes in the south of Argentina and I was thinking I must try it I need to try all this I have learned. And I, I decided to ask the young girl with the brain damage mm -hmm. if she had an interest, if I could try to do some experience with this new thing I have learned on her face. I mean, she were very poor. I could not not charge any money from her treatment. And I couldn't promise her that I could help her. When I had such a client, where I didn't charge money, it was also some kind easier to ask if she were okay that I tried it out um, as my first experience on her. So when I came back to Bahia Blanca and she came for her next consulting, yes, I asked her, Susanna, I have been experiencing something fantastic and I need to try it. What do you think? Could we try it on your face? And she agreed totally, whatever she still had any change in her situation with the food reflexology I have done until now, she loved to come. And we were both very sure that this is not a short project we had together. This is a very long project. So we just took it like easy. But this day, um, the first day after I came home from this fantastic area, Kopawe, um, I worked on her face and I have been working about 10 minutes just doing exactly the same as I have learned from this Aboriginal woman I were beside for five days. Suddenly, Susanna had a kind of reaction. All her uh, spasticity like relaxed. She became totally relaxed in all her members, in the fingers, in the hands, in the arms, in the legs, in the feet, totally flat on the treatment table. And the first reaction, it was really, we got so scared, me and her. I was thinking, wow, my God, for first time in your life, you are doing something you shouldn't. You don't know what you are doing. This was my first thinking. I got really so shocked. I hadn't no I had no idea that I could experience such a situation. Never ever I didn't had it in my mind. And also Susanna she became very like upset in uh, and crying and what was happening. This Reaction lasted a minute. Then she became spastic again. And then we started like briefing. Like actually you can never be happy that a person has spasticity. But in this moment it was like needed that she got back to what was normal for her in this moment to make us relax. So when we overcame a little bit the first shock because of this reaction, we talked about it and we talked about it very deep and very long time. And we 
agreed that this must have been something positive. So C and me together, we decided, let's give it a try. So I began working with her with this new phase modality and the food reflexality I have used for many years. And um, she started up having some positive reactions. Actually, as she had less spasticity, she became more flexible. And this was actually very fast. So, of course, I got very excited about it. I began thinking about, wow, I also learned this in touch for health. I also learned this in acupuncture. I suddenly remembered, wow, I had not used for a long time the points from the Chinese doctor. I have studied the brain. I have studied re the relationship with the different brain lobes and these points. And this girl, she had a frontal lobe damage. So I decided, slowly I will try to add more technique into this avodicral uh, work and see what happened, slowly, slowly, and to get an idea how to combine it, because I was sure it must be a benefit. And yes, actually, in one year, in 12 months, I rehabilitated this girl 97%. And in this process, many people on the street, they stopped her and they asked, what are you doing? You are so much better. You, you walk better. You are more straight. People were curious as it was a not very big town, not a very big city. People, they know each other more than less. Of course, not all 300,000, but it is what we calculate as a smaller city. So many people know each other. But Argentine people are also very talkative. They, they talk always, so they have no problems to stop a person just because they have seen the person before asking questions. So this was the way that I started up having queue in front of my door on the top of the hill, only with road of earth and without telephone of many people, many, many disabled people, because of course, the one who asked maybe had a disabled in the family, they wanted to help. So this was the way I began as the very first in the world, in the world of reflexology and also in the world of acupuncture, to work very organized with disabled. And it was children and it was adult and it was all kind of disabilities. I have worked in this year with syndromes, many different kinds, rare syndromes in Europe, normal syndromes in Argentina, vaccination, damage, accidents, adults, children, broken bags, it was everything. So it was not very practical to live on the top of this hill with a road of earth. When it was raining, it was actually the only day I had off because then the cars couldn't come up to my house. I had to move down to the city. So I got my first institute in Bahia Blanca, one and a half year after mm -hmm. I arrived to Argentina. And also, before I moved down, I, I had often visit of a, a lady. She came in a motor. And she knocked my door and she said, I want to learn what you are doing. And I said, no, no way. First of all, you see how many clients I have. I have queue from early morning to late night. And I also, I don't have my teaching material here. But she insisted. She came back and one day she said, now I have eight people who want to learn. And I kept on insisting my Spanish is not good enough. Whatever, of course, I, I have learned Spanish. <laughs> when you really need it, you learn it fast. So it, this was actually after eight months only in Argentina, 
I began teaching. I found a person who could like redo my drawings and translate into into Spanish and uh, I started teaching the first group of eight students. So when I moved down to the city I already had groups of students and I have my first institute in Bahia Blanca and I had three assistants from my very first group the lady with the little red motor, she became my assistant in this moment and she is still. So she has been with me from uh, the 89 until 2020, she still teaches for me in Argentina. Well, but this was a story and Susanna, this young girl with the brain damage, she became actually my first secretary. So yes, the life just kept on with so much work that you can't imagine. We started often at seven at, in the morning. My first assistant, Pilar, were her name, and me, and we could work at, sometimes until 12 at night. If she hear me, she would sit also too later. Don't forget, Lone. Sometimes we were still working at one or two o'clock at night. It was endless. It was endless. And of course, I found out that reflexology was not known at all in South America. Not at all. And um, it was not only in Argentina and whole South America. Nobody have never heard this before. So, of course, clients started coming from south, from north, from east, from west. And also students came in, traveling from one side and from other uh, places in the country. So because of that, I also began teaching in one side and in another city where I opened Institute, uh, Mar del Plata. Well, this was really active years and I was about one and a half year in this first place where I did my first institute. Then I had to move to something much bigger. So I got 1500 square meter, four floors, and we had 11 treatment rooms in the ground floor. And in the other floors we had school, administration, and so on. And um, in this time, I also had for first time in my life as a therapist, now working for 12 years and with so many clients, I had for first time a client with a broken back. And this man, he had an accident and he had five fractures of his spine. And uh, one of the fractures was between the fourth and the fifth of the cervical. The book said that he shouldn't be able to survive, but he survived. He was totally paralyzed. He couldn't move anything of his body. He couldn't turn his head to one side, to another side, or up and down. Totally impossible. Um, uh, but he could talk, and he also had visual function. His hearing was okay. It was motor function, totally paralyzed on both sides of the body. And um, he had a son. Uh, this son had espina bifida. So this was two persons in the same family in wheelchairs. And I worked with both. I did some fantastic experiences working with espina bifida already before I started working with this family. Actually, in this way around, I came in touch with the family I'm telling about now. And this man, 38 years old, with this accident in working, um, the family, before they came to me, they took him to Cuba. Uh, because they have heard about a rehabilitation system in Cuba. And now they told me that in Cuba they actually had had some results, some developing. 
and he had been there for about three months. But when he came back to Bahia Blanca and he didn't have this rehabilitation anymore, it was like everything went back. So, yes, this is what I also thought about already in Denmark with the school children. Mm, there's something sometimes missing uh, to get the right results and to obtain results who's lasting. Uh, but whatever, I got very interested in what he told me about Cuba. So I decided to travel to Cuba to see could I learn more because it was really a huge moment for me to be there in now in an institute where we had 250 treatment every week and the 60% of them were disabled. So of course I got very excited to hear about this, about Cuba. So I decided to do a travel to Cuba and uh, this was in 89. In the end of 89, I think maybe very close to 90. And um, I just went there without a lot of information. I thought um, I had the uh, address of the rehabilitation hospital where my, my client had been. He had given me the uh, address of it. So I went directly there and tried to get into this center. It was difficult. In this time, there were a lot of political problems in Cuba. But I managed to get in and I just said, here am I. I'm Danish. I'm living in Argentina. I, I, I'm looking for any knowledge about how you are doing in your rehabilitation method. And they let, they let me in. So I were there for one week, eight days. And it was amazing to see how they manage in Cuba. This is all about manual work. Mm -hmm. And the clients, they have different kind of training every day long. Uh, physiotherapy, body massage, acupuncture, because actually in Cuba they have used acupuncture since 64. So this was nothing new in, in Cuba with acupuncture, the traditional Chinese acupuncture. But also in between all these therapies, I saw a man, he was not very high, he was a little man, and he looks very oriental. And um, I saw him walking around between the, the beds. And what he had uh, in his hand, like a map of the face, and then he had very short, small needles. And he was looking at the map, like he had a map for each client with different points pointed out. And he did this small needling on the face. And of course, when I saw his drawing, I thought, wow, what is that? Because it looks like thousand points on the face. And I know perfectly that we only have 33 acupuncture points on the face, at least the traditional acupuncture points, 33. And here it looks like, I, I thought, first time I saw it, thousand points. It was 564 points, I found out later, but whatever, it's a lot of points on the face. So, of course, I got very obsessive walking at, behind this little man, looking what he was doing. And, I, of course, I also found out that he was from Vietnam and uh, that he only could speak Vietnamese and, and French. <laughs> So I couldn't. I could only speak Spanish now, Spanish, Danish and English. So, well, a language uh, difficulties, like with the Aboriginal, there's, I had to only use my body language because um, they don't speak Spanish either. They have their own language. But this little Vietnamese doctor, he got quite irritated at me. Um, he tried to get rid of me, but I insisted so much. And finally, before I left Cuba, I had photocopies of the points of the face and he also had other very interesting drawings of different micro maps on the face um, that I also got photocopy of. So without really knowing what to do with all these points, they were like listed in a list. It said, I 
I realized in this moment of my life that when you speak Spanish and read Spanish, you also is able to read French. Not to speak it, but to read it and to understand it. No, Latin language. So I could understand the muscles and the structures, the organs and glands, which were mentioned in this list easily. Well, what I did, I took this with me to Bahia Blanca and uh, in this institute, the second one I had, very big, I had three medical doctors renting room in my uh, institute. This was uh, typically medical doctors working with homopathic medicine, with acupuncture, and a doctor who was working with a cancer method, a kind of alternative chemotherapy. Well, these doctors, I used very much to ask. You see, I asked them, I learned so much from them. We didn't have Google at this time. So when I had all this difficult and strains and very uh, new still for me, brain issues, I need to ask them. And they really helped me a lot to understand many things around the brain. And my in my school, I also had a medical doctor working. He was teaching uh, anatomy for my food reflexology students. So what I did, actually, I bought the Danish model of food reflexology to Argentina, the TCM reflexology. I said that because we have two uh, different, mm -hmm. um, what can we say, types of reflexology in Denmark. We have the TCM, which is a Chinese reflexology, which I already mentioned is the one I learned. And we also have the uh, Egyptian uh, food reflexology combined later in the during the time with the meridians so well it's just a difference this medical doctor he was teaching anatomy in my school so i also had him to ask we became very close friends and uh, we were sitting during nights together studying these points and trying to find out how this work and of course we found out. It was obviously that it is not acupuncture. This is a kind of points related to the nerve system. So from the very beginning, we decided to call these points for nerve points, as they were related to the central nerve system. It becomes became just a, a very natural thing to call them nerve points. And I started up trying out some idea we had how to use them. Because, of course, I didn't learn from the Vietnamese doctor in Cuba how to use him. I just got his maps. So at this moment, I had a young girl. She was about 18 years old. And she had also been a part of a car accident. And she was also totally, totally um, paralyzed. And she could not swallow either. And this was one of the mm -hmm. first very huge warnings I had about her. It was her swallowing dysfunction. So I decided to try to figure out if I could make a combination of this point specific for her swallowing problems. And yes, I could. It took me three weeks only to make her swallow. So this was really, you know, the first experience you have of this kind. You never forget it in your life. After that, I did thousands and thousands and thousands combination and different uh, success with these points, of course. But I started using these points as a kind of additional to the facial reflexology I did formed like a basic treatment during this year. So, uh, also the micro maps I got from this Vietnamese doctor, I also like included and started a combining with the avodicanal technique, with uh, techniques from um, the acupuncture, the specific points which I found out. This medical doctor from China, Dr. Wong, he called um, specific brain points from the traditional uh, acupuncture. Eh? Some of them is from the traditional acupuncture and some of those points I learned, it is for more advanced 
but it was such kind of brain related points that I found out, out later that they also have of course a direct connection with the rest of the body. But this was what I did. I combined this point with the method I learned from the Avonikanal and then I also started up using these micromaps from Cuba which was actually from Vietnam <laughs> which I didn't know yet um, and also I started up having like a dictional for instance some additional from the Tots for Health that I only used when there were like brain issues and in the very beginning I also used this no points only for brain issues. But the next year I did both. I went back to Aboriginal to learn more. And when I came back to Aboriginal to learn more, they were very happy to see me. And I had my life's experience to live in tent with some of those women. And now I could suddenly see the dairy work inside such a tribe. They were always about, uh, every time I came, I have been there three times, 11, 12, tens, and it was a really, really big experience to be a part of it and learn how they live in such an amazing, simple way. Yes, so I learned also um, that actually men were never treated, only if they had a specific problem, if they felt off the horse during the day, because men, they left this tribe very early in the morning with sheep. And then they came back with the, all the sheep by night, late. And the women, they were cooking and washing and making fish. Actually, I never saw them eating meat, only fish from the lake. And um, milk and cheese from the sheep. And I also found out, which I could tell the old doctor, that actually they wanted dollar because they need to buy horses and horses you can only buy with dollar of course things I didn't know before I experienced that living with the Aboriginal I saw also how they used rose hip in the diet like a drink like a soup like something sweet with honey and I also saw how they were coloring their wool. They wear a very colorful clothes. So, wow, it was a life experience. And um, actually, I didn't learn so much more about the therapy that I already learned the first time I was there. But it was an experience to get treatment from them, also to apply treatment on them. And these elderly women, they told me, wow, it's really well, well, it, well, well done what you are doing. But I was still curious. It was like I had some question because I figured out myself by experience that this area was like related to certain parts of the body and another area was related to other certain parts of the body and so on. I had an idea, but I also had like a need or oh, anxiety to, to ask them if he, I'm, I was right. Well, I couldn't with word ask about things. So whatever, it was a great, great, great experience, but I was still like a little bit disappointed. I missed something more. Well, the same year, I also went back to Cuba. I was very, very sure that I need to go back to Cuba I need to find out um, more about this no point th uh, system I have learned the year before. So now I went to Havana and with me I had a little paper where a person I know, she wrote a, no a name of an Argentine doctor in the biggest main hospital in Havana. This hospital called the 10th of October. And it was really easy to find this doctor in the hospital, Dr. Cavallo. And um, a very, very fantastic person, I learned. And um, actually, the man, the medical doctor who took acupuncture to Cuba in '64, And uh, he could tell me a lot about the, the history about 
acupuncture in the Cuban hospital culture. And he also told me a lot of other things very interesting. I, I asked him, how can it be that in Cuba they accept mm -hmm. acupuncture? Well, he also showed me that they actually used Bax flower medicine for children in this hospital. Not only in this hospital, in all hospitals in whole Cuba. Yes, I learned that, of course, it is different because it's communism and the, the handwork is not expensive. Um, it's easy to have a lot of people working in the healthcare because they have so low salary. It's very different from Europe where the salary is very expensive and this is what makes it difficult to have many people working in the rehabilitation. So it was actually quite easy to understand when you get some history about it. But of course my aim was to ask about the points I have learned in the Santiago of Cuba the year before. And uh, actually he noted everything about these points. Dr. Cavallo, he could tell me everything I needed to know, I wanted to know about these nerve points. And he told me that this is a method from Vietnam. Actually a very old method, three, more than 3,000 years old. And uh, in the 70s, a doctor with name Dr. Chow, he began having an interest in these points. And uh, there were actually 64 points when he began studying the relationship, which was a, like a folk medicine in Vietnam for all these years. He became very curious how how this works because many people it was a common a common thing in vietnam that many people used in the daily um life for different system um, for the different symptoms for headache or for uh, menstrual pain or for everything so in this moment dr chow he worked with young drugged people and um, he worked like in an institute for this kind of uh, young people with problems of this kinds. And he began his first journey to try out the points and find out about more about the points in these years. And uh, he became more and more interested. He found out the function of the 64 points and he also developed many new points and um, he after that he worked in a military hospital where he also used and got a lot of experience with his combination of these points called Dean Chan and um, in the 80s from the beginning of the 80 to 85 he got a uh, um, government paid investigation with a a staff of medical doctors around him to help him to determine and to study these points much more profoundly. So it ended up with 564 points at this moment. Then Dr. Chow, he were invited to Russia and he worked in Russia also with the system treating clients and also teaching for Russian doctors this method. And then um, also, he was invited to Cuba and he came to Cuba with a um, group of his staff who have studied with him and um, one of these doctors from his team was the one I actually met in the end of 89 in the hospital or in the rehabilitation center where I went in Cuba first time. Uh, so, Dr. Cavallo, he told me all this and he also offered me to teach, the, teach to me the use of the points. And of course I said yes. And my first reaction was that I got very, very disappointed. Because it was a lot of combination of um, points for symptoms. For headache, for menstrual pain, for pain in the knee, for rheumatic pain generally, for 
all like symptoms and actually I have worked very hard in several years to understand and to get a um, structure in my own therapy where I wanted to treat the reason of an illness. It means if I have a client not only to apply some point for the headache, uh, for the migraine, but taking a look into the body's anatomy to know why a person get headache and treat this why. So this was my strong interest. In the same time, I built it up the facial reflex therapy to really understand that we must treat the reason of why the symptoms. So I said to, to, to Dr. Cavallo, actually I have tried the last year with my handicapped ch uh, clients in Bahia Blanca in Argentina to apply the therapy different. And he said, oh yes, this is also something Dr. Chow he do, he call it cyber therapy. So he told me that Dr. Chow, in his time in, in Cuba, which were about a half a year, that he had, like, taken a look into the most common illnesses in Cuba, for instance, sclerosis multiplex and also Parkinson's, and there were 14 different illnesses in total. And what he had done, it was an intensive investigation about how to treat the background, the reason of this kind of illnesses, but only 14. So, well, I talked to the Dr. Cavallo about my way to organize and to, to treat my clients with, with the way I found to use the points by myself. And he said, I like very much. I think you should uh, just go on with this idea so in the beginning, I didn't pay a lot of it attention to what I learned for symptoms. Dr. Cavallo, he gave me a little book. I still have it as a Bible. I don't use it very much anymore because, of course, now it is uh, 30, 31 years ago, all what I'm talking about now. I know it perfectly, perfectly by memory the day today. But it was a great moment to, to learn from Dr. Cavallo, which has been a student of Dr. Chow himself. So I got a lot of benefits of this travel, new knowledge. I was very excited about it. And in this travel, I also, in the same hospital in Cuba, I met the possibility to study with a Japanese doctor. And he was teaching a method he called Ryodin. And Ryodin method, it is about um, the, the way to analyze where in the human body there are some blocks in the central nerve system. So this was very interesting. And as I have been working now, uh, actually for about one and a half year with the facial method from the apodicanal, I have noticed very clear that when I were working, I felt some block on the areas of the face, like um, like it was tender or swollen in the uh, tissue underneath the skin. And I have been wondering, what is this kind of signs? Uh, and I actually learned about this from the Japanese doctor in Cuba. So it was like a whole new world opening for me. And uh, when I have been working with all this about, um, two years, uh, I also did some courses in the university in Buenos Aires because I really felt that I need more knowledge about the brain uh, to treat disabled, to understand the whole question about brain structures and the brain function. I couldn't, I couldn't this without studying very profoundly. So this is what I did. I realized that in Denmark, when I did the food reflexology course and the acupuncture course, well, actually we didn't have anatomy included uh, in the education at this moment. It came a lot later into the question. But I did in the Folk University 
in Copenhagen, I did a um, study of anatomy, but we didn't learn really anything about the brain. So, yes, I also studied the brain in Buenos Aires. I did classes uh, of neurological questions, many, to understand profoundly everything. And I also did a lot of study with a medical doctor who was working in my school as an anatomy teacher. So, yes, I learned a lot, a lot about the brain in these years. Now, with this new knowledge, and I also, I did form what we can call the basic work of the facial reflexology. It was like there, no? So, I started off now like collecting a dictional method. So, the treatment were now, in this moment, two years later, it was about seven basic steps where I did combine the points from the Chinese Dr. Wong, acupuncture points. Even I learned some more. So the 16 points transformed into 21. And then the avodicular work, where I understood that I'm treating entirely the full body with this method. And now also I had a new tool. I could analyze the different areas of the face in a way where I could find out where each body have like blocks, making it blocks in the central nerve system, making it impossible mm -hmm. to get result without moving, removing these uh, blocks uh, first. And then I also did add it into my basic, some of the maps from the Vietnamese doctor, Dr. Chow's method, in a different way than Dr. Chow worked himself. Still, I do in, like we can say, my own way, because the reason, as I explained, I am not treating the symptoms, I am treating the reason of the symptoms. That is why I can use the same maps, but in a different way than Dr. Chow himself. And also, yes, this is what I did. And now I suddenly have the nerve points, this 564 points I could combine very individual for my clients. And this was also the moment where I began using the points for other things than brain issues, also for cancer patients, for um, Parkinson's patient, or for whatever, migraine patient, or whatever any patient, I began using these nerve points. I did another additional for my treatment, which is based in uh, acupuncture and in touch for health, uh, where we work with the scalp for the different brain lobes. I also included, but as a dictional, it was not basic. So it was the basic steps coming from Awanikanal, from the Dr. Wong, Chinese uh, acupuncture, and from the Vietnamese medicine. It was like the basic I did on all, all clients. And here it was, I learned to analyze my client's situation. And depending on my client's situation and the symptom, the actual symptom they had, I used this additional. More additional came till during the time I heard about a Japanese doctor, Dr. Shamamoto, and uh, I started up learning things from his method also to combine, especially in the beginning also for brain damage, because Dr. Shamamoto is a Japanese doctor which is very well known in the uh, field of rehabilitation, especially he has worked more than 40 years, very much in Germany. And uh, other medical doctors have learned from him about hundreds around the world, mostly in the United States, some few in Poland also. So I had this um, big possibility to also learn a um, method from Dr. Shamamoto and also from another amazing Argentine doctor, Castillo Morales, also working with a method for disabled. Dr. Castillo Morales, he uh, learned from Aboriginal when he was a young doctor. 
um, just educated in the university, he went to the north of the mountains and learned from Aboriginal different method that he also developed into a method uh, working on the body and on the face with disabled children. And I got very inspired by his method uh, also to develop a method working in the same technical way, if I can say it in this way, a manual way as Dr. Castillo Morales. I learned from him during many years. And what I did, I also, when I went into the university in Buenos Aires, I found out that they have some lectures about um, medicine, but not the actual medicine. Actually, the old medicine, for instance, what I found there, it was lectures about the Tibetan medicine. And I was very curious, so I went there for some lectures and when I learned about the Tibetan school of medicine, I decided, wow, this I want to use in my school, in my teaching and in my treatments protocols, because this is what I have been looking after. The perfect way to treat the reason behind an illness instead of just the symptoms. Because I saw so clear that if I work with the symptoms, um, I can make symptoms calming down or disappear for a while. But as I do not do anything to my client getting rid of the reason inside the body, where is the dysfunction causing the symptoms, I will never have stabilized results. So in the Tibetan school of medicine, I really found the answer of many, I can say, like traits I need to coordinate to understand everything very much better. So I changed my whole school also for the food reflexology into the Tibetan theory of medicine, which is very different from the Chinese. 